Hi, welcome to CPDME. My name is Andrew Umrod and I am the founder of CPDME. Back in 2009, we went on a roller coaster journey to create a simple platform that you could document all your learning and development and keep it safe in one place. 10 years later, we're still here, we're stronger than ever, and we're here to provide a fabulous platform for you to watch some of these great learning and development webinars, but still, more importantly, keep an accurate record of your CPD. Sit back, enjoy the webinar, and we'll tell you all about the great benefits of joining as a member after the show. So now, how do the standards and the ACPC uh, work together? What's the relationship between them? So the standards are the foundation of how registrants or training programs are regulated. And the ACPC creates and maintains the standards for the professions registered. Not only that, but the ACPC ensures the standards are assimilated in university and pre-registration training programs. So we start working towards our standards uh, even before being able to apply to the register. The ACPC uh, divides the standards in four macro categories, as I said in the beginning. There are the standards of education and training, the standards of continuing professional development, the standards of proficiency, which are the big ones, and by uh, at the end of which we will do a little bit of reflection point. And then we will, uh, there are the standards of conduct, performance, and ethics. We're done this now. So we will just go and discuss the first three standards. Now onto the big one, um, standards of proficiency. There are threshold standards considered necessary to protect the public and they are unique to each of our registered professions. So at the moment, there are of course 15 standards of proficiency. Every standard sets clear expectations of registrants' knowledge and abilities when they start practicing. They also set expectations on what registrants must do to continue to meet the standards of proficiency that apply to their scope of practice. The ACPC approved programs equip graduates to meet the standards. And they outline what service users and the public should expect from their healthcare professional. They're also used to guide an investigation or a review if someone raises a concern about a registrant's practice. How are these monitored? Now, the ACPC carries out a periodic review of the standards every five years. Uh, regarding the standards of practice, this has been actually happened uh, in August 2022, and the standards are being updated for the first time since 2015. Uh, let's keep in mind that um, the new standards will not be active until September the 1st next year. So we do have a bit of time to get accustomed to them. The revised standards set clear expectation on the registrant knowledge and ability in a healthcare landscape which has changed and evolved in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic. And I will explain why. Uh, on the bottom of the screen, you can see uh, the, um, simply, simply the link to the ACPC website where you can check the, review, the, the standards and the reviews for your own category. That's the page. Uh, you can also literally just go to the ACPC website and click on standards and then go on standards of proficiency. There's a lot, lot, lot of changes. Um, I hope that I will be able to explain um, almost all of them to you tonight. Uh, please do keep in mind that the ACPC does not know I'm doing this webinar tonight, no, I, nor I speak for the ACPC. So I do invite you to read your um, own uh, standards of proficiency. Um, I'm always happy to discuss them because uh, my job do um, involves a lot of reading and reading of regula uh, um, regulations. So more than happy to have uh, talks about your personal standards. So let's begin. What has changed? First of all, the wording. You will see when you go and check your standards that there's a less passive vocabulary from be able to, to must, uh, to initiate, uh, instead of initiate solutions, 
to take action. Um, this is a trend that we will see specifically for a few professions, and I will point it out as we look at it. Uh, another thing that has changed is that registrants will be now required to have a more active role in regards of promoting public health, which has now been very, very important, especially as we see that the standards have changed um, also because of the pandemic. We will need to, as professional, understand the role of uh, our professional uh, in health promotion, education, and preventing ill health. We will need to understand when we care for someone how their economical, social, environmental factor can influence their health and well-being. Uh, we will need to be proactively empowering and enable individuals to play a part in managing their own health. And for ourselves, we will need to engage in occupational health, including being aware of immunization requirements. Uh, the ACPC has also uh, created some new standards in regards of equality, diversity, and inclusion. We, as uh, professionals, we need to be more active in recognizing the impact of their culture, equality, and diversity on practice. And we do need to practice in a non-discriminatory and inclusive manner. Um, this implies responding to appropriately to the needs of all different groups and individuals in practice. Recognizing this can be affected by differences of any kind, for example, protected characteristics, interse intersectional experience, and so on. We will need to understand the quality legislation and applying it to the practice. Once again, much more um, active. Um, we will need to be much more active into our understanding and our application of the new standards. And 5.3 is one of my favorites because as professionals, we need to recognize the potential impact or our own values, beliefs, and personal biases, which may be unconscious. Um, the United Kingdom and London is such a vibrant place. We have a big melting pot of a lot of culture, a lot of people. Um, I do have experiences of how my personal biases might have um, made me act differently from someone uh, to some in regards of someone. Uh, now, I do appreciate the ACPC taking care of this. Um, as a professional, I do hope that you share my feeling. It makes me feel even prouder to be part of the register. Let's see a few practical examples. Uh, now, of course, I couldn't uh, go through all 15 um, professions. I've chosen three, which I thought would be interesting to create um, a few considerations and maybe we'll uh, come, uh, we'll raise a few questions. So let's start with paramedics. What you're seeing is exactly what you will see in the update documents that you will find in the HCPC website. Uh, on the left, you have the commas. You will have the new standards with, um, on the bold, the things that have changed, the additions of text, and how they relate to the old standards. There are additions for paramedics on the division of and differentiation of physical and mental health. Um, there is an expansion of the role of, um, paramedical, uh, of paramedics because now they will not only need to understand human anatomy and physiology, but they also have to, for example, consider the lifespan of their patients. So how a procedure will likely impact that person at that time. Uh, and also they define and specify a bit more um, uh, techniques to use in case of emergency use and urgent care and primary and community care. So, You've watched the webinar. Let's just hope you've created some key learning points from watching that webinar. And more importantly, you're going to take some time later to document them using either the CPDME app or indeed the CPDME dashboard. So let me tell you about some of the great benefits of joining CPDME. Firstly, you can keep an accurate record of all your learning and development from here onwards for the future, but more importantly, for anything that you've had historically. So whether you've attended a course, you've read a journal, or you've attended a conference or webinar, all that information can be completely backdated back to 1900, I think. So plenty of time there to keep a good log of what you've done historically. 
More importantly, you can also plan what you have for the future. So if you have some future planned learning, you could document that on our dashboard and it will give you a prompt reminder that you need to reflect upon your learning journey. So membership, and that gives you unlimited access to all our previous webinars where you'll also get a free certificate that will pop directly into your portfolio once you've watched that webinar, as well as other great benefits that are listed on our website. Don't delay, the key action is click below, join with a special offer link and we'll have you up and running in no time. You can download the mobile app and we really will make your CPD easy.